brain morphology changes in Alzheimer's disease. When compared with the healthy brain, we can see that the brain in severe Alzheimer's disease has a different size, structure, and obviously function. So with that in mind, are there plasma biomarkers of neurodegenerative diseases? And that's what we'll see here. Amyloid plaques are characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. Lewy bodies are characteristic of Parkinson's disease. And tau tangles are found in Alzheimer's, but also Huntington's disease and other ne neurodegenerative diseases. But what about plasma biomarkers of amyloid plaques, tau tangles, and other aspects of neurodegenerative disease? So first, the A-beta 42 divided by the A-beta 40 ratio. And note that there's a typo in this picture. This picture isn't mine. I'll link to the paper that it came from in the video's description. It should be the A-beta 42 divided by the A-beta 40 ratio. Plasma levels of these two proteins are a biomarker of amyloid plaques that are found in the brain. Phosphorylated levels of tau, or P-tau, is a plasma biomarker of tau tangles found in the brain. GFAP, otherwise known as glial fibrillary acidic protein, is a plasma biomarker of neuroinflammation. And NFL, or neurofilament light -like chain protein, is a plasma biomarker of neurodegeneration. All right, so can we measure these? Can we measure these on our own? Unfortunately, price may exclude at, at least the A beta 42 to A beta, A beta 40 ratio as just two biomarkers more than $1,200. Outrageous. And for the other three that I mentioned, they are not commercially available, at least not in the United States. If these plasma biomarkers are available where you live, post it in the comments as I'm curious uh, where it might be available. But the good news is we may be able to indirectly track these biomarkers, plasma biomarkers of neurodegenerative disease. And that's by using the kynurny to tryptophan ratio, which is associated with phosphorylated levels of tau, GFAP, and NFL. And that's what we'll see here. So this is a relatively small study of 301 78 year olds. On the x axis, we've got phosphorylated levels of tau, NFL, and GFAP. And on the y axis, we've got plasma levels of the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio. And for each of these plasma biomarkers of neurodegenerative disease, we can see significant positive associations as the p value is less than 0.05. In other words, a relatively higher kynurenine to tryptophan ratio is significantly associated with higher levels of biomarkers of neurodegeneration. So let's take a step back. What is the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio? So under normal conditions, under non-immune activated conditions, for example, in the liver, the amino acid tryptophan is converted into kynurenine by action of the enzyme TDO, tryptophan dioxygenase. And that pathway is on the road to making NAD. That's the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, which starts at tryptophan and through a series of steps going through kynurenine leads to NAD production in the liver, as an example. But in the presence of immune activation, for example, by pro-inflammatory cytokines, interferon, IFN, alpha, beta, and gamma, or TNF-alpha, and the bacterial outer membrane metabolite lipopolysaccharide, LPS, they induce IDEO, indolamine uh, dioxygenase, which converts tryptophan into kynurenine. So in the presence of immune activation and inflammation, IDEO is expressed, leading to an incre increased degradation of tryptophan into kynurenine, thereby increasing the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio. But on the other hand, there are also anti-inflammatory cytokines or anti-inflammatory proteins like interleukin-10, IL-10, IL-4, and the, uh, the antioxidant enzyme superoxide dismutase, SOD, which inhibit IDO1 uh, expression. So taken together, the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio is an integrated measure of many pro and anti-inflammatory inputs, and as it's also a measure, it can be in part a measure of antioxidant defense, especially when considering superoxide dismutase inhibits IDO1 expression. Now, the good news is that the kynurenine to tryptophan ratio can be tracked, and if it can be tracked, we can potentially optimize it with the goal of minimizing inflammation, of maximizing antioxidant defense, and potentially limiting those plasma biomarkers of neurodegenerative diseases. And to do that, I've been using Iolo's at-home metabolom metabolomics kit, which includes plasma levels of kynurenine and tryptophan, but also 600 other metabolites, including many that I've covered on the channel. And if you missed any of those videos, I'll link to the metabolomics play playlist in the right corner.
If you want to measure kynurinine and tryptophan and all these metabolites on your own, discount link in the video's description. So what's my data? So I currently have 10 tests for the plasma kynurinine to tryptophan ratio as shown here. And on the y-axis, we've got the KTR or kynurinine to tryptophan ratio plotted against time. In 2023, over five tests, the average KTR was 24, which then raises the question, what's optimal for the kynurinine to tryptophan ratio? And I covered that too in an earlier video. I'll link to that too. It'll be in the right corner. If you missed it, check it out. And in that video, we saw that 15 to 23 for the kynurinine to tryptophan ratio is associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk. So 24 is just outside that. And if there is good news for 2023 data, is that values greater than 25 are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So 24 as the average value in 2023 isn't the best. It's not quote unquote optimal. It's not in that optimal range for lowest risk, but it's also not in the zone for increased risk. So it's somewhat in the middle or it was somewhat in the middle. In terms of what's optimal, also avoiding an age-related increase as this ratio, kynurinine to tryptophan ratio, increases during aging. So with that in mind, I have five tests currently. I'm waiting on another test uh, for July. Five tests in 2024. And over those five tests, the average kynurinine to tryptophan ratio is 22.5. Now that's in the 15 to 23 lowest all-cause mortality risk. And at least over this relatively short period, about a year or so, I've avoided any significant increase from 24 actually going in the right direction to 22.5. But the goal is to keep it relatively low to, keep, to minimize risk in terms of neurodegenerative disease biomarkers increasing during aging and to minimize inflammation and to minimize oxidative stress. So how can, how can I do that? And to address that, which foods and nutrients are correlated with the kynurinine to tryptophan ratio? And those data are on Patreon in the correlations tier. So if you're interested in that, check it out. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself while helping to support the channel, including at-home metabolomics, Ulta lab tests, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests done, epigenetic testing, any dequantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.